Welcome to the candidate debate for the City of Clinton Ward 3 Alderman. I am Kay Broadbeck with the League of Women Voters, and we are co-sponsoring this with the Clinton Chamber of Commerce. Ward 3 Voters, this is your government. This person, elected on June 8th, will be your representative for four years and your advocate for your entire ward. The city services affect us every day, they affect you every day. That street, sewer, water, the parks and recreation and more. June 8th, make sure that your voice is heard. Seven to seven, the polls are open. In Ward 3, you are the northeast quadrant of the city starting some of it down on Dunton Road all the way up to Kickapoo. You will be voting at Traceway Park Administration. The candidates today for Ward 3 are LaShonda Alexander, thank you for coming, and William Barnett, and, or Bill Barnett. Yeah, Bill. Bill Barnett. The production team today, I want to recognize Randy Bell, is our moderator from iHeartRadio. Carol Taft with the League of Women Voters is our timekeeper. Audiovisual is Mark Jones and happened to be assisted by Gabby Jones and Evan Jones. The candidates know our debate rules. We have opening statements, questions, and closing statements at two minutes each. If they wish to respond to the other candidates' answers, they have one minute and they are timed on all of these and alerted. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone watching this. Um, we appreciate your being a concerned voter. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Randy Bell. It's all yours. Thanks Kay and welcome again to both of our candidates here with us. And we begin with opening remarks. Each candidate, as Kay mentioned, will have two minutes, up to two minutes to make their opening statement. And we'll begin with Mrs. Alexander. I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Thank God for allowing me to, to, to be here thus far. Um, I, LaShonda Alexander, I'm seeking the, your vote. I'm seeking and asking for your vote on June 8th to be your alderwoman of Ward 3. I like to be the older woman uh, for Ward 3 because uh, my husband and I ha have our children. Our children were raised here. My husband is a lifetime uh, resident of Clinton and I've lived here as well. We are vested here. We're vested here in that we chose to not only raise our children here, um, but we are vested in our home. This is our permanent residence. And uh, as we also worship here uh, and have uh, for many years vested here uh, through, with, through the individuals that, that we meet and we live by, we live uh, with. Uh, as a realtor, I've been a realtor for 15 years. And being a realtor with 15 years, um, I take it further. I take my job very serious uh, as it relates to economic development. Uh, we are vested. I have helped hundreds of individuals to, to live here in our beautiful city of Clinton. And I like to continue the growth and the work um, that is uh, so pursuing. Um, I also seek that to be that diversity that is needed in Clinton. Um, and I would like to ask, and I respectfully request and ask for your vote on June 8th. God bless you. Mr. Barnett, your opening statement. Uh, I'm Bill Barnett, and I'd like to thank the League of Winning Voters and the Chamber of Commerce and the voters for the past 12 years in Ward 3 that have elected me their alderman for the last 12 years. I'd like to start by introducing my wife, Bonnie. Bonnie and I have been married 61 years. And today is an anniversary of sorts. We moved to Clinton 54 years ago this month. So I guess that's an anniversary of sorts. Uh, Bonnie was a bookkeeper and uh, secretary at, at the first East Side School and worked for the school district for 25 years. And uh, so she is well versed in, in what's going on in Clinton. We had uh, two sons, Brent, who is deceased now. Uh, Brent 
uh, I guess it's sort of another anniversary for him. He, uh, 1983, he was selected as the star student for Clinton High School. A little later in the month, he, uh, he was awarded the uh, Kelly Green Cook Scholarship as the state star student. And to my knowledge, he's the only student in Clinton who's ever been named the state student for the uh, city, for the state of Mississippi. Uh, Brian uh, also attended Clinton. Uh, he was a band member. He started in the fifth grade, had a band at that time, and uh, he started in the band and was an attache member and wound up graduating from Hines Junior College and uh, Northeast in Monroe, and uh, we're proud of him too. All right, we know a little bit more about both candidates now. We'll uh, move on into some questions. And the first question is very basic. Uh, it's about your priorities and what, uh, what you would do, what you would focus on as a, a member of the Board of Aldermen in Clinton. And we'll start with you, Mr. Barnett. Uh, my priorities include public safety. The police department is one of my first priorities. And the reason for this, one of my military assignments, I commanded a criminal investigation attachment in Jackson. I had 20 police officers, highway patrolmen, investigators that were certified investigators and worked with the Jackson Police Department in our training one of my officers was the was head of the Vice Narcotics Division of the Police Department. For the three and a half years that I commanded that unit, I had an opportunity to see and experience a lot of the things that our police have to go through and what they face during their uh, times on the, out in the field. The uh, fire department, uh, when I came on as alderman, the fire department was faced with having to build a new fire station by the end of our first term, by, by virtue of the fact that we had annexed uh, a portion of north of our north ward, and uh, we were mandated by courts to have that fire station built in those 30 days, by the end of the by the end of the uh, term, uh, I found out that the state fire academy will allow new aldermen and, and mayors to come to the state academy and spend a day in the field with them. They will have a half day of uh, training, and then if you decide to suit up and get thrown in the burning building, which I did, uh, I got an experience. Just getting suited up is an experience. All right, um, Mrs. Alexander, let's um, talk a little bit about your priorities. Uh, thank you, Randy. My priorities would be, you know, that we um, together can implement strategies to promote uh, economic stability. Uh, we need that economic stability. I know, you know, definitely firsthand the importance of economic development with being uh, a realtor uh, all over, but especially here in, in our, our city of, of Clinton, that economic stability that is needed. Um, what I would like for us to do is to um, work together um, to find common ground and unity uh, and for that diversity that's needed with businesses. All right, uh, we have a follow-up here. Yeah, I want to follow-up on that. I just wanted to, when she was talking about uh, the economic development, I want to just make sure that people understood that I, I think we need to have a professional economic developer to take care of the market changes that we've had not only in Clinton, but worldwide. We need somebody that has the experience and knowledge of how to follow what's going on in the markets and help us get into the markets that we need to be in. All right, anything further from you, Mrs. Alexander? No, thank right. you. We'll move on then to, uh, since we brought it up, economic development is our next topic. Uh, <laughs> and specifically, um, we all know for the city to thrive, that we need more businesses and more jobs to offer to our citizens. And what we'd like to ask you is what is your strategy for bringing more businesses and industry to Clinton and what obstacles does the city face and how would you as a member of the Board of Aldermen try to overcome those obstacles? And we'll start first with Mrs. Alexander. Thank you. Um, what we would need to do together to help uh, move the city uh, 
toward helping with that economic development is, first of all, what I would promise you is that I would listen first. Uh, listen to the concerns. I have a heart for the concerns and the people. And then work together to implement strategies that will move our city forward. Uh, economic development, of course, we know that that is a, a, a very vital uh, part that we need. And here's something to consider as well. Um, we definitely know that our city of Clinton is a uh, beautiful and thriving city. And what we need is that not only that diversity, we need uh, to be that unified force. And what I would like to do and I would promise is to uh, work together with the work that have already have started. I'd like to continue that work as well. Mr. Barnett, uh, as a member of the board, what have you done to promote economic development and what would you do if you get another term? Well, I think the first thing the board did was when we have hired a full-time economic developer this last term. And as, as I said before, I think we need an economic developer because the, the world is changing so much and Clinton is part of that as a, as a employee of Procter & Gamble for 35 years, the corporations I worked for was one of the 10 top corporations in the world. And they had to operate worldwide. I know Clinton is a small town, but we have to operate on what, what's going on in the entire world because everything that goes on affects us. And I think we need an economic development that's on top of that. And also I think we need to, our citizens need to work with him on trying to bring what we need to Clinton with his help. All right, any follow-ups, additional comments? Okay, we move on then to the issue of public safety, the topic of public safety and certain issues. And in light of national concerns and crises that we've seen, policing is facing heightened challenges in how they protect and serve a community. The question is, what do you see as the challenges that are faced by the Clinton Police Department? And Mr. Barnett, we'll start with you. Uh, I think the challenge that our police department and fire department face are the fact that our city is growing. We're covering a lot more area and that we'll have a lot more citizens. Uh, yes, we are the 13th safest city in the state of Mississippi, but over the next several years, we're gonna need more police. When I talked to the police chief recently, I asked him what he felt like he needed to help improve our city. As far as policing is concerned, he says, I'm going to need more people, more patrolling officers, and uh, that should help us in the future. The fire department, uh, I asked the fire chief what he needed next steps. We went from uh, a fire rating of five to four, and I asked the chief, fire chief what we need to do next to get down to a three. He said, well, the next step is going to be add that fourth fireman to each one of our fire trucks. Now that is going to take a lot of money, but that is something that we need to look at for the next four years. And I'm looking forward to us seeing what we can do to help man the police and fire department. Mrs. Alexander, what do you see as challenges facing the police department here in Clinton? Thank you. What I see uh, as challenges is to actually uh, put the boots on the ground, put uh, put uh, the words to action. And that would be, uh, of course, through, through not just listening, um, because uh, we have uh, uh, those safety issues that are concerns in, in, a, in our ward and our city. And I think in order to move forward uh, with that, then we would definitely need to implement uh, strategies uh, along with the police uh, department and safety and fire uh, to move this city forward in that aspect. All right, let's talk a little bit about infrastructure. Certainly uh, a topic that impacts us all. Uh, city of Clinton responsible for providing safe and adequate infrastructure for its citizens. Of course, that includes streets, bridges, sewer, water, adequate drainage, even internet access. Now, it's expected that federal dollars will become available for infrastructure projects. And the question to our candidates is, what would be your plan of action for applying for this funding and then using it. Uh, Mrs. Alexander, your thoughts on that? Yeah, what my, here's a thought from me, and that is, uh, again, 
it is listening, listening uh, to the constituents on, on what uh, their concerns are as it relates to the, the uh, infrastructure. Uh, we will need to uh, develop a plan, um, and, uh, a strategy that would help toward that uh, for the, the infrastructure. We do have um, safety issues with the, the, the empty infrastructure uh, as it relates to water, water and sewer. And I would like to help move the city forward and be a part of the solution to that. Mr. Barnett, your thoughts on improving infrastructure? Well, one thing that we are fortunate to have in Clinton, we have an excellent water and sewer system. And the reason it's excellent because our water and sewer managers have had a preventive maintenance program going for many, many years. We take care of the problem before we have a problem. So that has helped a great deal. Uh, the, the other problem we're going to be facing in the next five years is we're running out of space to discharge our water that has been, our sewage and, and water that has been treated. And we're going to have to figure out some way, and it's going to cost, right now the estimates are 50 to $60 million to build a pipeline across from Clinton to the Big Black River in uh, Warren County or on the high edge of Hines County. So we're, that is one thing we're going to have to work on is try to get the federal government to help us and the county help us come up with the funds that we're going to need to get that taken care of. As far as paving, uh, we have an excellent paving program. Uh, eight years ago, we had zero budget for paving. We now have a, a viable paving program. And right now, the stimulus money does not cannot be spent for paving. So. We just need to rely on our paving budget we have. We're increasing it every year, and uh, everybody just hang with us. We're doing all, all we can to get the streets paved. Mrs. Alexander, you had a follow-up? Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, as it relates to the infrastructure, paving, uh, waters, um, in my profession as a realtor, that's definitely a, con a concern um, and would like to work um, toward helping those developments that are uh, have not moved forward uh, and in the future there are uh, lots of uh, the, the lots that are out there and we're going to need to work together in common unity um, so that we will secure adequate water um, adequate water for the the stability of those uh, additional uh, ha residential housing that will be especially in our ward anything further mr. Barnett Let's talk uh, about diversity then. Uh, in a recent meeting of the Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Tim Martin, the Clinton Public School Superintendent, stated that students in our school system speak 26 different languages. We acknowledge that Clinton is a diverse city and would like to hear from you. How would you ensure that the views of all citizens in Clinton are considered and their needs are met? Uh, we'll go first to Mr. Barnett. I think maybe I might be the poster child for diversity. Many of you know I drove a school bus for 12 years uh, out Pine Haven. I'd get on my bus at about 10 minutes till eight in the morning, 10 minutes till seven in the morning, drive out through six to eight subdivisions, pick up 30 to 40 kids, and I would have anywhere from six to seven different ethnic groups on my bus. We had no problem with diversity on the bus. I had an opportunity to meet most of the parents had no problem with those. I think people that moved to Clinton move here because it's a great place to live, and I think we treat everybody equally. And I, I say that I think we are one of the most diverse cities, and we treat everybody equally. Mrs. Alexander, you've kind of touched on diversity a couple of times in your prior comments. Uh, talk to us about uh, you know, what you would do to uh, advance diversity in Clinton. Yeah, um, thank you. Absolutely, diversity. I, I definitely believe in that. Our our four four kids are are all graduates of of Clinton High and have experienced in that that diversity. But um, I'd like to to uh, expand and expound that diversity is definitely needed, and I would like to be that diversity uh, that that's needed for the city council as I seek uh, to gain uh, older woman of Ward Three. A topic uh, that we hear a lot of uh, discussion about is quality of life in a city like Clinton. Uh, the city invests in services that are intended to add to that quality of life in order to not only attract 
new residents, but also keep the ones we have and keep them happy. Uh, those services include our Parks and Recreation, Main Street Clinton, the Wood Activity and Therapeutic Center, and the Natchez Trace Visitor Center. What we would like uh, you to talk about is what would you do to support, change, or even improve these programs? And Mrs. Alexander, let's start with you. Um, here's what I'd like to do to, to support. Again, you'll hear me say listen. It's first listen. Listen to um, uh, our constituents here in for the people of Clinton. Uh, listen to their concerns. Um, recreation, you know, we have kids. Um, we have the great school district that we that that are that is here. Um, and then though, with the, with the children, we want them to remain here. They want to have them to have something to do. Recreation is important. Uh, we want them to 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 be proud to have recreation here in Clinton. And I think we need to work together uh, as a common unity to ensure that our children have uh, more uh, uh, recreation to do, you know, in our city. Um, so they will be safe and secure, but also have fun at the same time, not just for our children, but for our youth. I know we talk about bike trails and, and um, the stability there would be making sure that it's safe um, for recreation bike trails, be ideal to have bike trails that uh, it would be safe to, to go without being in, uh, going into heavy traffic, uh, safety issue there. But if we had the bike trails where it'd be very uh, safe for us to make a, a common trip to the grocery store um, without it getting into heavy traffic, um, that's recreation to not just adults and children. And I would like to be a part of that. All right, Mr. Barnett, uh, talk to us about quality of life programs and, and any improvements you'd like to see. Okay, what, one thing I'd like to encourage all the citizens to be involved in quality of life projects. I go back to about five years ago, I was reading, I've been a, a Lions Club member for 25 years. I was reading an article in the Lions Club magazine about a town in Texas that partnered with Lions Club International and they applied for a $100,000 grant to build a Lions Club Park in downtown, I forgot the name of the city. I tore that article out and took it to the mayor. I said, Mayor, is this something that Clinton can do? I think it's something we need. His comment was, make it happen. Well, it's a lot easier said than done. But I got with uh, our Main Street director and several other people in the city, some of the department from some of the uh, uh, clubs, and we applied for the $100,000 grant. We got the grant from uh, Lions Club International, which was seed money for, we needed to have matching funds within about a month. We had about $250,000 total donated to the park. We now have a state-of-the-art handicap park in downtown Clinton. It can be used not only for our citizens, but it can be used for the citizens throughout the area. Now, this is the type thing of quality of life that I think not only the city can do, but I think the citizens, if you look, look at things that they feel like the citizens should help the city do and help our city grow and have a great quality of life. So far, we've been talking about citywide issues, but now we want to drill down a little bit into that section of Clinton that you represent. And so we want to ask both of our candidates, um, what uh, do you see as the most pressing issue in Ward 3? And what is your plan to address it? And uh, please be specific. Uh, Mr. Barnett? Okay. Uh, this ward 3, as most of you know, is the fastest growing ward in the city. Uh, we made up mostly of residentials. We have a lot of schools. We have a lot of parks in our uh, ward. And we have some farmland in our ward. But the, one of the major problems that I see over the next five to ten years is widening Pine Haven Drive to take care of the traffic going out there. Now, this is not a project that the city can handle. It's a project that we can get together with uh, the county and MDOT and come up with a plan where we can work out a plan where they where they will can get it funded. I know Rankin County has done this with several of the areas, and have they had expanded areas that they needed 
uh, new roads, and this is the, the major problem I see in, in Ward 3 in the next five years is widening Pine Haven. Mrs. Alexander, what, uh, what do you see as the, the biggest issue in Ward 3, and what, uh, what plan do you have to address it? Yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I too uh, feel that, that that's an issue and would like to work for, toward with the city council to move that forward, um, but there's only so much that can be done. But here's another um, concern in, in our ward, and, and that, that is our water, water issues, um, you know, as, as it relates to infrastructure. And with that, having the, those issues with if infrastructure, um, what I would like to do is be a part of the solution um, with working with the city council to move forward with rectifying those issues. Well, those are our questions, and we move on now to our closing statements. And uh, first up will be Mr. Barnett. Okay. Having been involved in many positive projects in the past year, 12 years, we've made much progress, but there's more to do. I would like to ask the citizens to vote for me on June the 8th and give me the opportunity to serve them for the next four years and help solve some of the problems we'll be facing for the next eight, four years. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Alexander, you have up to two minutes for a closing statement. Yes, thank you. Um, I am seeking to be your next Alderwoman of Ward 3. I respectfully ask for you your vote, and the reason being is this. I have a heart for people. I will listen, and I would like to move forward with you toward that effort. Here's another thing that I would like for us to do as a common unity. The city of Clinton's future is bright, sunshine bright, beautiful, and I'd like for us to work in harmony to move the city forward. Thank you, Mr. Barnett, for your service. And what I would like to do again is ask the citizens of Clinton to vote for me on June 8th. Elect me to be the next Alderwoman of Ward 3. God bless you. Thanks to both of our candidates, Lashonda Alexander and Bill Barnett, uh, candidates uh, for Ward 3, uh, City, of Alder, uh, City of Clinton Board of Aldermen. Back to Kay now for some closing state, uh, comments, I guess it would be. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you candidates. We appreciate both of you sharing your views and your plans for our fine city. Viewers, please remind your friends and neighbors that this will be up on the City of Clinton website which I believe is clintonms.org, correct? Um, also, I uh, want to remind you that you can go to a League of Women Voter voter guide that's called vote411.org. Vote411.org for the candidates' answers to questions. And again, it's your job to go to the polls. We want to see you between 7 and 7 at Traceway Park. Please go vote. Thank you.